I'm embarrassed and shy as we lie by the riverside. Books fly over our heads as they laser the Adapt plate on the back of the Granada engine, but it has to be centered by putting a dial indicator on the crankshaft and rotating the crankshaft until it's uh, true with the machined part of the um, duct plate which then spigots onto the Porsche gearbox which is there. Now see on the uh, block I've put some screwed inserts where the bolts go which is sharp points on them and these mark the plate when I tapped on it. Clearly see a couple of indentations there which I've got a drill in the centre of and then we'll have them fairly close in position. It's the adapter plate bolted in position and the studs which mount the Porsche gearbox in position. Anybody who's done any of that will know how hard it is to tap vertically and thread vertically. And that is going to go on there. Now bolting the flywheel in position. Using cap heads because I can't get the original bolts in. That's the Porsche clutch going on with a Rover SD1 uh, shaft to line it up because the clutch is actually a Rover ST1 clutch which fits the splines of the Porsche gearbox. Amazing. This is a 302 engine that's arrived from the States. My wheels in the background. That won't begin going in for, I should reckon, probably two years, year and a half. We're just waiting for the chassis today. Arrival of GT40 shell in chassis. It's the nose, the back end, nose tipped up there, middle bit upside down there, and everywhere there's bits and pieces of GT40s. Lord knows where they all go. We've got the chassis upside down now. Quite a job. And uh, there's the um, stainless steel floor pan, which will be riveted on. I'm going to get some rivets. Pre-drilling the uh, chassis. The sheet is already pre-drilled. Drilling the holes now. The next stage is to um, put the pop rivets in. Holes are already drilled. Put the pop rivets in. Stainless steel pop rivets, these. Tongs. Obviously nothing's fastened on yet, so it's got to be cut and trimmed. But we've got a just about a passenger compartment and a rear engine bits I can see where they're gonna go. Seem to be short of one or two bits at the front yet. panel on. hope they all don't take as long as that. I'm going to put one on the inside there. So most of the back end panelling done. I just offered the roof section up to see how it fits. I started laying out some of the uh, bits and pieces of the suspension. Got a little bit further ahead now, friend ends on. Starting to work on the um, 
putting the right hand suspension links on. First thing to do is to machine some spaces so the um, wishbone sits central. Alright, step the uh, wheels on and checking the alignment. Um, the towing seems to be about right. And the caster on this one is about four and a half. And it's got about half of you negative camber. I haven't checked. I ran into a spot of bother though because the um, you see the suspension bolts here. In fact, it turned out to be M12 and not half inch, so they didn't fit the uh, rose joints properly. And I've now replaced them. Uh, That's a lot better job. One of the extras I'm fitting is these rubber gaiters, which go on the um, over the rose joints. Hopefully, that will pre, uh, protect them from the road muck. Uh, you fill them full of grease in through the hole in the side. And then push the rose joint in. Then uh, this is a left hand one, left hand thread as you probably notice. And that's it protected from any road grit. The rear hub's already assembled to the upright. That's roughly where the top link's going to fit. This is a temporary spacer, this one. And they will be split and obviously the spring and shock absorber will be mounted on that. And the bottom wishbone fits in here somewhere but I haven't made the spaces for that yet. See how the um, how much it's changed. I mean measure the distance it's moved on the floor. I set the rear uprights to seven degrees leaning back. That wasn't very good because the lump the links wouldn't screw properly onto the rose joints. So I've now, and I also got a fair amount of bump steer. Bump steer is measured by measuring how much the wheel goes in and out as, the, as it's raised up and down. You can now see the spirit level, um, which we check against the marks on the floor there. And by raising the trolley jack, which represent different ride heights, and then checking once again on the floor using the spirit level, we can work out how much the angle of the wheel has changed in this direction. And it seems to be okay now. A slight modification to the steering bracket so I can get the steering a bit higher. And now we'll see what the fit's like. Jaguar steering column installed, <coughs> adjustable, mounted at the top with some modifications to the chassis and also mounted uh, against the chassis at the bottom there. Runs down to the rack and all seems to work okay. So this picture tells a tale. Um, when I came to check the uh, bump steer effect, either the wheels changing the angle when they go up and down, I found that they were bump steer was highly excessive so I've now cut the rack mountings off and I'm welding bits on the bottom to lower the rack by about an inch. Using <laughs> out the uh, holes where the rack Spirit level behind that, just you use as a straight edge to check the 
alignment to the sill. The card here, and I'll show you as the suspension goes up and down how that's moving. We get, we've limited it now to about a sixteenth variation towing up top to bottom.